Hey guys, Simon and Alex here from Top Tennis Training and in this video we're going to look at the serve and volley. So the first thing you need to focus on a serve and volley is obviously to have a good serve. Now if you can get a good serve in, the, the chances are that your opponent is going to give you an easier return, maybe a ball that's floating a little bit slower, a ball you can come forward on, a ball you can close the net down on and then hit a, a good volley and hopefully put yourself in a good position in the point. Now there are a few things that I see players doing over and over again, mistakes, when they are trying to serve and volley. Now the first thing is, when you're doing that ball toss, you want your ball toss to go slightly more in front when you are coming into net. If I throw the ball in line with a baseline, I jump up and I hit that ball and then have to start moving into net off that ball toss, it's quite hard to transition up to the service line. So you want to have that forward body momentum straight away from the toss. So as you're serving, the, the jump into the court and continuous movement forward into the net will uh, get you there quicker and certainly will make you feel uh, like you're uh, in a good position to hit the volley. Now another thing that players do is when they land off that serve, they look to see has the ball actually gone in. So the first thing you want to do, if you're going to really serve volley, you have to fully commit to it prior to actually seeing if the ball's in or out. So just have to go forward, if the ball is out, then you stop and you come back. But I see a lot of players serving and volleying, waiting to see if the ball is in and then rushing in. Now this is something that you just can't do and you wouldn't see Federer doing this. You just simply wouldn't have the time to get into the net quick enough if you were to stop at any point. So there should be no doubt that you're going to serve and volley. You're serving and then you're coming forward. You're not uh, serving and seeing how well this, uh, the server's gone or where has the server's gone and then moving. That would be more, more like a ghost approach uh, shot, but it's not. it wouldn't be classed as a serve and volley tactic. So if you serve and volley, you, you decide prior to, to serving and you just go full out and straight into the net trying to make big steps to try and cover that space as quickly as possible. Now another thing that I see a lot of players doing is when they serve and volley, they speed in as quickly as they can and they forget about the important split step. Now the split step will allow you to slow your body down uh, to then be able to move in either direction, whether it be a forehand or a backhand volley or even a smash. You, you need to have that little pause where you can make the decision and usually, well, always it's when the opponent hits the ball. So you want to be split stepping when the opponent hits the ball. Now another big thing that I see is where you're moving into after that serve. So normally players would serve in volley down the tee, so that middle area. Now the middle area cuts, out, cuts off the angles that the players, that the returner has in order to pass you. Now if you serve out wide, they have a much wider angle to go out wide on you and they also have the down the line where they can almost pull it outside of the uh, tram line to try and get in. So you, you, you're almost having to cover a lot more of the court if you serve out wide. Now if you ser serve down the tee, you're able to move forward a little bit easier because you're following the line of the ball and then they don't have that same angle to pass you on. So it becomes a bit of an easier volley uh, and if you do serve a good serve, you put yourself in a good position. Now Alex, why do you think serve and volley isn't something that a lot of pros use uh, nowadays? Uh, well, I think definitely the, the courts have started to slow down, so um, like Wimbledon, the, the courts are a lot, a lot slower. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's fewer fast courts yeah. around the world that they play tournaments on. Obviously, it makes better viewing where players can have rallies, but that has certainly killed off the, the serve and volley game a little bit. It doesn't mean that the players don't use it. They still use it uh, on occasions, but it has definitely uh, slowed down a little bit, you know, so people, players don't use it quite as often. Now a lot of times I see players using just a flat hard serve and they think they need to hit the ball as fast as and hard as possible in order to get in and have a serve and volley tactic. Now by doing that you're almost shooting yourself in the foot a little bit because you're going to have to split step a lot earlier. Obviously the, 
uh, the ball's going to reach your opponent a lot quicker, they're going to make the contact with the ball and their return a lot quicker, so you've got less time to get into the net. So when you do serve a really big serve, sometimes you don't have enough time to split step and really get inside that box, so you leave yourself vulnerable to a, a good return if they do make good contact and make the return back. Now a better option would be to make a slightly higher serve, slightly more of a kick serve. The ball is tra traveling a little bit slower, it still has got the bounce that's high, that's difficult to return and if you place it well, if you go really down the tee and the ball kicks up and into their backhand, it becomes a tough return but you also give yourself the time to get into the court and put, the, put away the volley. Sometimes that even throws the opponent off because they're expecting a big flat serve from you but you actually spin it and it, the timing of their split step goes, they're not able to quite reach the ball and it gives you an easier volley than you, you would expect normally. So now I'm going to show you a few demonstrations of me serving and volleying. So my main concern really is firstly getting that ball toss out in front. My body weight and momentum is moving in the court. The second thing I'm going to work on is really slowing down that serve, not going for a big flat serve like Alex said, going for more like a kick serve, going down the tee and then closing in. Split stepping when Alex is about to make contact and then after that moving in, seeing where the ball is and then moving forward. go down the tee but it was still high enough to give me time to move up. The other big thing that I really focused on was seeing as early as possible where that return is going so I can continue moving forward to then close down the net. Now when you are coming into net that first volley unless it's a high and easy volley that first volley is going to be like an approach shot. So you're hitting that first volley normally deep down the line or deep down the middle. You're cutting off the angles for the passing shots. Then you carry on closing down the net. Now a lot of the pros will use the stutter step as a split step when they're running forward. Now this enables them to continue moving forward after the split step. So what, what happens is they don't want to land with two feet like this. It almost becomes like a little shuffle and then they move off. So it's like a little stutter and then move off to the right direction. That allows for, for you to place the right foot on the floor before making the push into the direction that the ball's going. Whereas if you land like this, sometimes it can be a little bit heavy. If you land on both feet, then you may not get the distance and your, the momentum going forward uh, as you would in the other split step. Now, another serve that is really effective when doing the serve volley is trying to jam the player in the body. Now, when the ball is coming into the body, the main concern of the returner is just to try to make that return. They're not thinking about where they're placing it, so they're thinking more about getting out of the way of the ball and just making that return. That's when you can then close in and try to finish on that first volley. Yes, it's going to be a lot more difficult for the player to find the angles if they're having to hit a return from here. The ball is usually going to go down the middle, it's going to be a little bit higher and it's going to be easy for you to make that knockoff volley and finish the point. Now when you are at the net, you've got a few options with the volley that you have. When the ball is a little bit higher, you're looking for that knockoff volley. So you're hitting down through the court, creating angle, trying to make the ball move outside of the tram lines for the player not to be able to reach it. Now when the ball is a little bit more middle, so if you have a ball that's kind of your, between your shoulder and your hip, you have to go through the ball a little bit more and you're going through the court, it's, you're still going, going for low over the net, uh, but this time you're going more for a firm volley through the court rather than down. So you're not going to get quite as much angle on it, you 
could, but it would be a little bit more risky. Uh, the players usually make the first volley down a line because it make, puts them into a good position uh, to be able to return the next volley. If the player does get there, they're in a good position because they're covering the angles. Whereas if you go cross court, a lot of the times you leave that down a line open and you'll be uh, vulnerable to that down a line passing shot. So when you are coming in, you've got the ball between the shoulder and the hip, you're going for a nice down the line volley, firm, through the court, you're looking to get it close to the baseline, even if, and if you go for a slightly deeper volley, uh, it's unlikely that the player will be able to, uh, to pass you on the next shot, and you can almost do a, a two volley knockoff. So you do the first one through the court, and then the second one would be the knockoff volley. Now what happens if someone returns in your feet, Alex? What kind of volley would you be looking to do there? So here you'd, you'd be looking to play more of a touch shot, so you're not looking to get distance or length. You're looking to kind of cushion the ball with your hand, uh, and you're gonna be looking to play the ball a little bit shorter. So a drop shot volley would be a great uh, shot from that position. If you are a little bit more confident in your volley, you could still play uh, a deeper volley, but it requires a little bit more skill because you do need to keep that ball low over the net. And that's the main thing. If you keep the ball low over the net, when the ball does bounce, the player from the baseline has to hit the ball up. And if the ball goes up, it goes up a little bit slower and then you're able to knock it down when you're at the net. Now, if you hit the ball high, they're able to then place the ball wherever they want and make the ball dip into your feet even more, and they're able to hit with a little bit more power. So you're gonna really struggle to play against someone if you've given them a, a high ball that's loopy and is giving them time to attack you when you're at the net. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Hopefully you learned something about the sun volley from this video. If you like it, please click the like button and also leave a comment down below. Now the serve is one of the most important elements in tennis and just like here in the serve and volley it's also very important to get that serve in and to get those cheap points. Now if you want to improve your serve, whether it's placement, whether it's power, uh, whether it's the technique or the movement of the serve, we've got a course especially for you. It's free, so click here and join us now and we'll see you inside on lesson number one. And if you're watching on a mobile, Click the link under this video, that will take you to a page. All you have to do is enter your email and we'll send you video number one right away.